congestion normally causing delay in delivering the data so that impact the real time applications a lot loss of packets so sometimes the devices may discard the packets due to buffer overflowing next reducing the throughput rate so the overall network performance can be degraded as the data transfer get delay in a significant manner so these are the main types of congestion control it can be classified into open loop and closed loop so open loop means it prevents the congestion before it happens so closed loop represents the congestion can be controlled after it happened so the open loop can be further divided into retransmission policy window policy acknowledgement policy discarding policy admission policy then the closed loop can be further divided into back pressure choke packet implicit and explicit signaling then forward and backward signaling so come let's see so retransmission policy it is one of the open loop congestion control technique so here the sender retransmits a packet if it feels that the packet it has sent is lost or corrupted so however retransmission in general may increase in the congestion in the network but we need to implement good retransmission policy to prevent congestion so the retransmission policy and retransmission timers need to be designed to optimize the efficiency and at the same time that has to prevent the congestion the next step is window policy so it can be classified into flow control and sliding window so it controls the amount of data a sender can transmit before receiving the acknowledgement then here a sliding window mechanism that allowing the sender to transmit multiple packets within that specific window size it helps to enhancing the network efficiency discarding policy here it follows three mechanisms so one is congestion detection so discarding policies are implemented to detect the congestion and discard those packets whenever it is needed then dropping the packets so when congestion occurs the routers may drop the packets to prevent the network to be overloaded so random dropping here it drops some random packets which helps in preventing networks instability selective reject methods sends only the specific lost or damaged packets uh, admission policy it defines with the access control and the quality of service so uh, at admission policy which is a quality of service mechanism that can prevent congestion in virtual circuit networks so it switches in a flow first check the resource requirement of a flow before admitting into the network so a router can deny establishing a virtual circuit connection if there is a congestion in the network so you can provide a quality of service by controlling the number of new connection going to establish in the network so that ensuring the desired quality of service for existing users then uh, back pressure it is a type of closed loop congestion control mechanism that try to remove the congestion after it happens so the various method involves our back pressure so it is a node to node congestion control that starts with the node and propagates in the opposite direction of data flow so the back pressure technique can be applied only to virtual circuit networks avoiding the congestion by reducing the transmission rate it alleviates the network congestion and provides a smooth transmission of data the next step in closed loop technique is choke packet so it works with the congestion indication and flow control so a special packet has been sent by the router to inform the sender about the congestion in a specified path then controlling the overflow so it adjusts its transmission rate to reduce the congestion and improving the network's overall performance this is signaling so there is no communication between the congested node or nodes and the source so the source guessing that there is a congestion somewhere in the network when it does not receive any acknowledgement so on sensing this congestion the source is slow down its process then it particularly used in case of transmission control protocol so it works based on the network behavior and congestion response so the sender adjusting its transmission rate based on the network conditions explicit signaling so based on providing the direct feedback from the network to the sender informing about the congestion it can adjust its transmission rate and it can effectively manage the network resources by preventing the overload of the network this explicit signaling is different from the choke packet method so in choke packet a separate packet is used for this purpose but here in this method the signal is included in the packets that carries the data so while in open loop congestion control it mainly based on the predefined rules and policies without real time feedback from the network so it helps to anticipate and prevent the congestion before it happens how to shaping the network traffic by manipulating the data packets arrive times to control their rate and the distribution which helps in smooth data rate throughout the network this is a leaky packet algorithm is a traffic shaping solution that categorized by an open loop approach so just imagine a leaky packet that has a hole on its ground so uh, as you can see this 
so if the bucket is empty then no water drops out so if there is some water inside it the water drops out with a constant rate so the bucket is full and the additional water is filled in the water overflows the packet so this can be implemented as follows so on a center a time dependent queue ensures an equal amount of data on the other hand if the data can be put fast into the queue until it is full then on the other hand the data always leave the queue at the same rate it helps to control the data rate by limiting the rate at which the data is sent on the network then storing the packets so it temporarily stores packets in a virtual bucket then constant trip rate so the packets are released at a fixed constant rate the main advantage of using this method is the implementation is easy then it provides a constant data flow and it helps in effective preventing of the burst traffic but there are some drawbacks for this method anyway it introduces some latency in the network then it doesn't help to addressing the traffic spikes and it may not be suitable for real time application the token bucket algorithm so it can be categorized as an open loop approach so this algorithm allows burst for short transmission while making sure that no data is lost so in contrast to the previous leaky bucket algorithm not the data that is used to send but tokens are queued in a time dependent manner so once token is needed to send a single portion of data it can implement the process based on the tokens that represent permitting the data units then buckets it can able to store the tokens and can transmission the data at a constant rate so packet can be transmitted only when it is available with a token so or else it will not be transmitted so the main principle behind this token packet algorithm is generation of the tokens so at a constant rate then then consumption of the tokens so a token is consumed for each data packet transmission then blocking the packet so if there will be no tokens are available we should block the packets until a token will be available so the pros and cons of this token packet is it is more flexible than the previous leaky packet algorithm and it allowing the burst of the traffic and can be adjusted for different traffic patterns so it has some limitations the method is complex somewhat the previous method and careful configuration is required while implementation and it cannot be used for all network scenarios comparison of that leaky packet and token packet so it is very simple and effective for basic rate control but here in token packet it can be adaptable to various traffic patterns so the main pros and cons of this open loop control is uh, implementation is uh, simple and uh, performance can be predictable and it is a low overhead method it has only uh, limited adaptability to dynamic changes in the network and it cannot be able to uh, efficiently handling the unpredictable burst in a network traffic comparison with the closed loop control that using a real time feedback from the network by providing uh, better adaptability and responsiveness to changing the conditions this congestion control is needed the most that helps in stabilizing the network by preventing excessive traffic loads and ensuring the performance of the network then, then it helps in reducing the delays and the packet loss that helps to delivering the data in a fast manner then a fair resource allocation that helping all the users and the applications that having access to using the network resources in a efficient manner conclusion this uh, congestion control techniques are essential for optimizing a uh, network performance so by ensuring uh, the reliable data transmission these techniques can contribute a lot inside the network and providing a efficient internet experience thank you for watching the video i hope you understand the concept of this congestion control meet in the next video till then it's goodbye from vijay